Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Now can you can you hear me? So if you have any question you can use question window at any time. And I'll start the webinar uh, from now on. Uh, today's topic is optimized super T design for Australian standards. 5100 2017 so i'm i'm going to introduce you uh, useful functions of MIDAS civil for australian civil engineers and there are some functions we already have in the current version also um, there are other functions we are updating for the next version which is uh, coming like uh, at the beginning of uh, March next month. So firstly, uh, I'll show you concrete stream material database in MyDasible. This is new function for the next version. So when you define material properties uh, for steel and concrete, we have properties menu, material properties, and you could find a steel type and concrete type and here you can uh, select Australian standard and select the material I'll show you with the software so this is an example model so under properties menu we have material properties so when you add certain material you can select a steel or concrete and select Australian standard here and select the material then you could see modulus of elasticity and potential ratio and weight density uh, etc if you if you would like to modify this value, you can change the standard to none, then you can manually change the values. For the concrete as well, you can select Australian 2017 and select material, then you could see the material properties. Moving on to next. Uh, so we are exactly following the Australian standard 5100.5 2017 so you can see table uh, 3.1.2 concrete put properties at 28 days so name is exactly same with compressive strings it starts from 20 and it ends uh, 100 so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight material, exactly same. And density, we are using same value. And Poisson's ratio as well. And for the coefficient of summer expansion value as well. Next is clip and shrinkage properties. So on the properties menu to consider clip and shrinkage, you can use time dependence material. Here you can select Australian standard 5100.5 2017 and input some values here. Uh, for this as well, we are following the code. This is from Australian standard. So hypothetical thickness means uh, hypothetical, hypothetical thickness of a member used in determining creep and shrinkage and you can calculate this using this equation and for the drying basic shrinkage strain you can find that 800 times uh, something for Sydney and Brisbane and 900 for Melbourne and 1000 for elsewhere so we are following the code I'll show you how to define time dependent material in Myra Civil so on the properties menu, we have time dependent material and clip shrinkage. 
we already have this function in the current version. So here you can see uh, AS 2017 and also 16 and also 2011. Here you can input compressive strength of the concrete and select explosion environment and input hypothetical thickness and select the city and you could see creep coefficient and shrinkage strain along the time. This data will be applied to the model using construction stage analysis. Also, different compressive strengths along the time can be considered using the code as well. You can select AS code and input compressive strength of the concrete, then different uh, strengths will be considered along the time uh, to the mo for the model. Next is Shupati and Plank Garda section database. We already have a uh, Shupati Garda section and I Garda section for Australia and New Zealand. And additionally, we have added plank garden section and few more section for New Zealand for the next version. So under P when you define a section properties, you can go to PSC tab and select PSC value type. And you could find section data and DB, which means database. Then you could see uh, this standard sections for Australia. We have added a super section using this drawing from Roads and Traffic Authority of New South Wales. And additionally, we have added Plank Guard section. This is also from New South Wales. And for New Zealand Transport Agency, we have added, we already have Super D and I got the section. And for the next version, we will have single holo core beams and double holo core beams. This is one of a uh, single holo core beam section. This is double holo core beams. I'm gonna show you this as well using the software. So on the properties menu, we have section properties. You can click on add and go to pre-stress concrete and select PSC value and go to section data and DB. Here you could find AS and should put the section with different height and I got a, this we already have in the current version and we additionally added the plank guard section and for New Zealand as well we already have should put the section and I got a section and we have added hollow core section for single and also for double as well. SH means a uh, single hollow and TH means double hollow. After selecting the section, uh, let's say if you need the solid section for diaphragm, then you can use define by coordinates function and modify the coordinates. I'll show you this as well. So for example, you selected uh, a super decoder section. And if you want to change it to a solid section, you can go to define by coordinates. And you can check the, all the points with the numbers. So if you need the solid section, the number starts from here, 15, 
and it ends uh, at 27 so you can delete 15 to 28 points if you delete we can make the solid section or you can slightly change the coordinates of each point in the cross section uh, this uh, these numbers are, are matching with uh, this number in the preview. So you can change the section. And there are some parameters in the section data diagram. Uh, I uh, copied some screenshots from online manual. So when you press F1 key, you can see our menu you can exactly go to same menu properties section and section properties and you could find chest tab and value type and you could see some descriptions So here is the uh, explanation for parameter for design. It says that uh, enter the section dimensions to be used for design, uh, referring to PSC viewer. The dimensions are used for calculating the shear strings. If zero is inputted in T2, then the program automatically recognizes the section as a T section and uses bt as web thickness for t section the parameters for closed section and open section are calculated using the follow equations so, so these are the equations for closed section and open section and thickness for torsion thickness for torsion uh, enter the minimum web thickness for calculating torsion stress. So these are actually not for the analysis. Um, these are for uh, capacity check using our design menu. And you can select the shear stress position. After setting uh, this position, you can check shear stress at uh, Z, uh, one, two, three position. Next is automated tendon. This is new function. We already have tendon template function on the structure menu, but we didn't have automatic uh, auto generation option for Australian standard. But from the next version, we will have uh, this function. I'll show you this with the software as well. So for instance, uh, let's say you have this model with super dissection. You can go to structure menu and PSC bridge and go to tendon template. Um, then you can select the element uh, which you'd like to input the tandem profile and click on auto generation and select AS and AS super T and select the section. These are exactly the same from a section properties menu. And once you click OK button, you can see the tendons here. You can also modify the tendon profile from here. If you, let's say, if you delete this tendon, you can select, drag by just dragging and press delete key and it will be deleted. Also, you can copy this, select tendon and go to move copy menu. And this is Y direction and this is G direction. Let's say you copy you want to copy this to right side three times 
you can input like this and apply button then you can see you can copy this and once you click OK button the tandem profile will be installed automatically uh, there are actually few more functions to model the tandem profile in uh, MyDASB basically uh, you can draw the tandem profile by coordinates using tandem profile function Uh, you can input the coordinates of the tendon uh, from here. So this table can be uh, copied and pasted into Excel program. So some users uh, create their own access spreadsheet like this and copy and paste it to my server. Or some people are checking the tendon profile using this kind of spreadsheet if you so they have a graph format with the tendon coordinates so they can check the location of the tendon by changing coordinate of the tendon uh, this is kind of tips on using metacivil and also if you go to tools menu we have tendon profile generator I'll show you this with another modifier so let's say you have uh, this box gather you'd like to input the tandem profile using AutoCAD then go to tools menu and tandem profile generator and you can import DXF file from here select uh, AutoCAD file and select the layer and you should have a uh, tendon profile separately for x uh, g plane and also for x y plane and the tendon name should be exactly same with tendon property in my civil so i will simply name it as top and select the gutter section this is element uh, from element number 100 to 181 so for x jet plane tendon you can simply select the tendon profile by dragging and set um, original point and for xy plane as well select and set original point and starting element is 100 number 100 element and click ok add and ok then you could see uh, the tandem profile with text format you can select all and copy and go to mct command shell and paste here then run then this text data will be applied to the model so this tandem profile is exactly same with the AutoCAD file also using MCT command cell menu you can search uh, tandem profile in the model in this model you can click on insert data then these are the tandem coordinates in this model you can copy this to text editor or access spreadsheet and modify it and paste it and run then the tandem profile will be modified so there are um, so, um, many of methods to input a tandem profile in MyDASB you can choose um, which you feel uh, comfortable for your 
project and next is a uh, traffic loads as per Austrian standard we already have Austrian uh, standards for moving load I will show you this with the model as well so when you uh, go to if you go to load menu and moving load you could find Australia for moving load code and you can define firstly you can define trap lane lane width is and where spacing you can follow the design code here this model has uh, four lanes and if you go to vehicles menu and go to standard we previously in the current version we already have uh, these uh, vehicles including S1600 for M1600 we do have uh, this vehicle separately for combined axle with UDL and the axle without UDL and 3 axle group with UDL separately because the Australian standard specifies that um, with different condition of M1600 vehicle we should have different dynamic load allowance but um, you, we can apply apply a dynamic load allowance for one vehicle so we separated this vehicle for different dynamic load allowance and additionally for fatigue check we have added for the next version for different scale factor to the vehicles and we have added pedestrian loads as well to check fatigue so here you can see in the uh, Australian standard for fatigue design load of 0.70 times uh, vehicles so different scale factor should be applied to the vehicle for fatigue check Uh, next is automatic load combination. This is new function for the next version. So after analyzing uh, the model, you can go to result menu and define load combination. Now you can select uh, Australian standard 2017 and select some certain condition then you could get load combination this is load combination window and this is load cases with factors which belong to each load combination so here when you use automatic generation function you can check um, the option for load factor for dead load and superimposed dead load soil load ground water load we have some choices of load combination factor. For example, for dead load, uh, it says that dead load that reduces safety, we need to apply 1.2 for the concrete. And dead load that increases safety, uh, we, could, we can consider 0.85 for the concrete. You can also consider both load factors or you can choose one of them also you can uh, if you have defined fatigue vehicles you can add it to here then it will generate fatigue load combinations as well I'll show you this uh, with the example So if you go to result menu and load combinations and go to concrete design we have auto generation function you can select 
Australian standard. I select both and click OK. Bridge type is roadway. Then you can see the load combination. And these are load cases which are belong to each load combination. We do have only a self weight load case here because this model has only the self weight and moving load. And if you want to check serviceability, um, if let's say this is for the serviceability check, serviceability service load combination, you should select serviceability on the uh, active option. So, so this model has more load combination, including tendon secondary and creep secondary as well. And moving on to next. Next is automatic Excel design report. This is also a new function to get automatic Excel report. So previously we didn't have Austrian standards uh, on the PSD design menu, but we will have this from the next version. So if you go to PSD design menu and go to parameters, I'll show you this step-by-step um, -step, uh, procedure how to to get to know how to use a design function in MyDocible. So once you select Australian standard, you can input maximum nominal aggregate size. Uh, this is example value, so please don't care about the input value here. And you can select output parameters. So let's say if you'd like to check about only shell resistance, you can check on here and check off for other items. Then the software will now calculate for other items. So you can save time and you can get the result quickly. If you need all of output, then you can select all and click OK button. And PSC design material, as you might remember that when you define uh, material properties in properties menu, uh, there is no uh, input dialog for compressive strength and yield strength for reinforcement. When you use design function, you can using this PSD design material, you can define compressive strength and yield strength of rebar and concrete. And explosive class. Um, Australian standards spec uh, specifies that you need to consider uh, this clause for a B2, C1, C2, and U class. So if you assign explosive class, you can select the classification from here and select element and click on apply. If you don't assign any explosive class, the software will consider all the members as A class. So if all, all the members are A class, you, you don't need to use this function. This is for additional consideration for uh, these uh, classes. And here you could find two different positions. We have two different functions for the position. One is design position and the other is output position. Uh, simply, uh, design position, if you assign certain elements to design position, it means that the software will calculate the element for capacity, capacity, and the result will be uh, showing on the PSC design result but not Excel report. So if you assign a certain element, it means that you, you want to see the result on the PSC design result. And 
the other uh, output position means if you assign the element, that means you can get Excel reports for that element. So simply, the design position should have more elements than output position because you can extract Excel reports after calculation. And then lastly, you can click on uh, perform design button like analysis. I'll show you this with software as well. So PS menu, you can select the code and parameters. You can select code and input nominal aggregate size and select output parameters. And I have assigned composite section to the model using number two material. So I inputted the concrete material for GADA and reinforcement material for the GADA and slab material for slab material including riba. You can select the material. And I would like to show you additionally how to input reinforcement in Mada Civil as well. So when you go to section manager, you can find reinforcement on the properties menu. So you can, let's say, uh, if you want to input rebars here, you can set the guideline for cover thickness. Let's say 0.00. .00 5 and you can input the coordinate or you can use input method B and click the edge of guideline and input number let's say 50 and edge bar you can input the reverse in this way selecting the diameter and you can input a shear reinforcement for shear capacity check as well. Diagonal reinforcements, uh, reinforcement means shear reinforcement. You can input reinforcement like this. And some of you might see different um, unit for diameter of reinforcement. You can change the preference here on the tools menu you can go to design menu on the concrete on the riba you can change it to Austrian standard then material uh, default material database will be replaced by Austrian standard And again, back to PSD design menu. Here uh, we have, let's say, if you want to check the results for um, this GADA, then you can select the GADA and select position. I position means starting point of the element and J is end point. And you can select element and select position and click apply. Then uh, the elements will be added to the design position. And if you go to output position, let's say if you need the Excel report for this element and click this element and click apply and that's it. Then number uh, 322 element will be added to uh, output position. That means uh, when you get the Excel report, then Excel report will show you the capacity check for this element. So after performing analysis and design, you can see um, various result tables. For example, you can check, I have selected only iPad. You can check 
uh, flexure strength. This is demand force. This is capacity moment. And you can check the ratio. And this is minimum reinforcement area. And this is reinforcement area. And this is minimum um, moment without uh, actual forces. And it is showing whether the moment is positive or negative and showing the critical load combination. Some members are showing NG. You can check for share as well and combine the share and torsion strength and stresses for construction stage and pre-stretch tendon and for the cross section as service load and also crack control as well. These are the stresses and it's showing um, a lot of stresses so you can compare the values from table. And also you can see result diagram including capacity curve. PS is design result diagram and click apply. As I added uh, for only this gather to the design position, the result is showing for only this gather. So green curves um, means capacity for flexure from major axis. It is showing constant because, because I just applied same section and same tendon and same reinforcement for whole gather. And this colorful curve is showing uh, demand forces. You can check this diagram for shear and torsion as well, and for stresses as well. You can check uh, design forces as well, which means demand force to check capacity. Result, and you can get Excel report. From now on, I'll briefly uh, introduce you about capacity check as per Australian standard 2017. So I'll open up our Excel report. Uh, sorry. So this is our automatic Excel report and I just uh, on the right side I just added some screenshots from Australian standards. So we are following Australian standards 5100.5-2017 and this, is, this report is for element number 322 and position is I and section type is composite. And these are section properties, including area and moment of inertia, and height and width for cross section and for transformed section. And this is material properties. And this is pre-stressing steel information, which means tendon. So for all terms, we are exactly following the code. For example, DP means distance from the extreme compressive fiber of the concrete to the centroid of the tendons in the zone of the concrete in ten tension under ultimate strength conditions. FPB means characteristic minimum breaking strength. PY means yield strength of tendon, and etc. So it is showing all the information for each tendon profile. And it shows longitudinal non pre stressed steel reinforcement means simply longitudinal rebus. 
in the Gada and in the Slav, I didn't define any torsional reinforcement. And this is transverse uh, rebus, which means shear reinforcement. And this is forces due to effective pre stress. So it is calculating pre stress after the loss um, stress, stresses times um, area of the tendon. It is showing the total summation of the tendon forces, effective pre stress. Now it starts checking. Uh, from flexure, so it is checking for positive moment, and the maximum load, the critical load combination is number three, and type is moment maximum, and this is demand uh, moment under every load combinations, enveloped load combinations, and for uh, the neutral axis, we are following this clause number 8.1.2, basis of strength calculation. So we are considering this. Um, A specifies that um, plane sections normal to the, to the axis remain plane after bending except for unbonded tendon. And secondly, the concrete has no tensile strength. And distribution of compressive stress is determined from a stress strain re uh, relationship for the concrete in accordance with clause number 3.1.4. And the strain in compressive reinforcement does not exceed 0.003. We are considering this and calculating uh, tensile forces and compressive. Uh, forces and it should be uh, equals so we assume the neutral axis and calculate compressive force and tensile force if it is matched the assumed neutral axis is the neutral axis this is how we find neutral axis so is it is comparing it is checking for the ratio as well. And starts calculating resistant. So this is nominal resistant. And we are uh, checking reduction factor as per table number 2.3.2, .2, bending without actual tension or compression. It should be uh, 0.8 or below than that. So reduction reduction factor times nominal resistance is um, this value, and comparing with demand force, and it as it is over than demand force, it says okay, and it is checking for minimum strength requirement as per. The clause number 8.1.6. So we are using same equation and we are checking uh, this statement for minimum reinforcement as well. For negative moment, we are using same procedure. So I'll skip this. And shell design, uh, the critical load combination is also uh, number three load combination. Uh, firstly, uh, effective shear depths we need to calculate. Calculate. So effective shear depths is the distance between resultance of the tensor and compressive force due to flexure. So it is um, checking the resultant for compressive force and tensor force, and the distance is effective shear depths. And after this, it is checking longitudinal strain as per clause number 8.2.4.3 using same equation. It says that if the strain shows negative, uh, 
if it is tension, you can use zero or use this equation. We are applying zero value for safety design. And for KV value and theta V value, we are applying general method. So we using by using this equation, we find the value, this KV and theta V value. And after this, uh, shear strengths are uh, firstly we need to calculate shear strengths shear strengths by concrete V U C uh, as for this clause and shear strengths uh, from shear rate reinforcement we are calculating using this equation then you can we can get ultimate uh, shear strengths by adding summation of VUC and VUS plus PV. PV is vertical component of pre-stressing uh, crossing the section. Because I didn't define any tendon in the transverse direction, it shows a zero value. And it is also checking the maximum uh, shell strength uh, considering uh, web crushing. So finally, comparing the shear strength with demand force. And it is also checking requirements for transverse shear reinforcement. So as demand force is showing the value over than uh, this equation, so we need, it means that we need shear reinforcement. Otherwise, we can skip skip uh, share reinforcement check and maximum transverse share reinforcement it is okay and maximum spacing for transverse share reinforcement it is checking uh, this clause and proportioning longitudinal reinforcement on the flexure tensor side so we need to check if we need Additional longitudinal reinforcement and tendons on the flexure ten tension side of the of a member section. So we are calculating delta F T D value. So um, with this value, you can uh, divide this value by area of riva or ten tendon then you can get the amount of required the, the additional riba or tendon. For compre compression side as well, same procedure. Uh, additionally, when you calculate uh, FTD value, we have two different equations. One is with torsion and one is the other uh, the other is without tuition. As this procedure is under shear design, on the shear design, we are using the shear without tuition. And when we check for torsional forces, we will apply shear with torsion uh, equation. We have same procedure. So firstly, we are checking torsional e effect, whether we need a uh, torsional check or not. So for this example, the demand torsional forces, force is less than uh, this equation. We can skip a uh, tor torsion check. I'll show you um, the other Excel report. This is actually our specification for automatic uh, report. So if it is uh, the demand force shows over than uh, this equation, we need to check uh, this uh, criteria. Checking torsional resistance and minimum torsional reinforcement 
and wet crushing, additional reinforcement on, on the longitudinal direction. We will use shear with torsion equation. And that's it. And lastly, we have crack check um, process. I didn't apply any other classification for exposure. Maximum load combination and direction and stress for the under uh, service load combination. So we are following uh, this procedure as per the design code. So flexure cracking in a press stress beam shall be deemed to be controlled if under SLS load combinations, the resulting maximum tensile stress in the concrete does not exceed at uh, this value. If it is exceeded, uh, we provide reinforcement or debonded uh, tendons and checking spacing and check uh, this stress value and check the increment in stress uh, steel stress near the ten tension phase. So we are using exactly the same procedure, checking maximum stress and checking maximum spacing and stress limitation. And this is it about Excel report. I think some of you have some questions. Uh, one question from Ben. Uh, how is the torsion constant calculated? I'll show you with the software. So when you define sectional properties, let's say you have this um, section, you can see a calculation result. I x x a uh, value shows torsional uh, resistance. And the other question is, can you model the tendon debonding? Uh, so when you model the tendon profile for debonded tendon, you need to model the tendon profile in Maida Sibir, excluding a uh, debonding part. For the transmission length, you can consider it uh, using uh, this value, this option, transfer length. length. This means uh, transmis transmission length. Uh, if you need uh, the presentation file and or recording file, you can just send us an uh, email. Then uh, our staff send you recorded file and presentation file. Or we can upload to the YouTube or anyway, uh, if you send an email, we can send you the copy of this webinar. And for more questions, I, I would like to send you by email for the answer, separately, individually. So, so if you are already our user, you can, if you have any other questions, you can visit our global technical, global support website. And for uh, the new, uh, for the people who are new to my CV, you uh, please send an email for any questions. And thank you for watching today's webinar. I hope this is this was helpful for you. And I hope to see you uh, next time. Thank you. Bye bye.